let's cross over to the Supreme Court and let's to listen what's happening there. Or show partiality. Do not accept a bribe, for a bribe blinds the eye of the wise and twists the words of the innocent. Follow justice and justice alone, so that you may live and possess the land the Lord your God is giving you. That is Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 19 to 20. And so, Honorable Chief Justice, my ladies and lords of the Supreme Court, may it be for all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Senior Counsel. And thank you for those very apt words to not just the Chief Justice, but to all of us on the court. It's my duty now, I think, first to report that uh, the Registrar of the Court advises me that the President of the Law Society of Kenya, Mr. Nelson Harvey, has sent his apologies. He would have been the next person to address the court. It now is my honor to call upon Mr. Alex Mutete representing the Director of Public Prosecutions to address the court. Thank you, my lady Deputy Chief Justice. Uh, your Ladyship, the Honorable Chief Justice, and your Lordships <coughs> present, uh, let me take this opportunity on behalf of the DPP to first congratulate the Honorable Chief Justice for our elevation to the position of Chief Justice at a time when the world expects gender equity and is looking forward to world leadership in that area. Indeed, my lady Chief Justice, as an office, we are grateful that from the process that you went through, the Judicial Service Commission, in its wisdom, picked one of its own for elevation to the position of just Chief Justice. This we say because it is a recognition of the important role that the judiciary plays in our country and it by no means <laughs> confirms that you as a judge has made invaluable contribution and therefore the appointing authority considered it necessary to appoint you to this position. Having said that, I wish to confirm that as an office, we will endeavor to pursue interagency cooperation and collaboration in the delivery of justice, not only to victims of crime, but also persons charged with criminal offenses. We offer our unequivocal confirmation <clears throat> that at any one time that the judiciary shall consider it necessary, as an office will be available for any contribution that we can make to improve our systems and ensure that justice is delivered to all timelessly. We embrace your leadership knowing and noting 
that during the period that you served in the civil society, Honorable Chief Justice, you emerged as one of the champions of the protector of human rights. You did not shy away from controversy whenever duty called upon you to address the question of justice and in so doing you made serious and considered contribution to the development of our law let me take this opportunity and note your invaluable contribution in the decision of the Attorney General versus Mohammed Ashi and others, where as a court, with the former Chief Justice, the Emeritus uh, D.K. Moraga and others, you did actually confirm the applicability of international law in our jurisdiction. That by itself is confirmation that indeed as a chief justice as you begin your journey uh, in that office we can look forward to decisions that will not only take into account the local jurisprudence that we have developed in several areas but also international best practice that indeed as a country we require so much in many areas. This is particularly important to us because as an office we are confronted with emerging crimes that have assumed international dimension and if we were to limit ourselves to local jurisprudence then obviously we would suffer very serious shortcomings in terms of delivery of justice. That is a commendable position that Honorable Chief Justice and the rest of the judges who sat in that matter really uh, <coughs> took and we believe this being the highest court then you <coughs> shall be leading from the front in adopting international best practice as you interpret our law. Allow me, my lady, Chief Justice, and your lordships present, um, to also make reference to yet another decision that we consider of jurisprudential importance as an office. In the case of Veronica Gitai, Inspector Veronica Gitai and another, a decision that my lady Chief Justice, you rendered in Malindi together with um, the Honorable Justice William Ouko, with whom we also uh, take serious note that you have been elevated at the same time to the Supreme Court you did come out very strongly in that decision and affirmed that human rights should be protected of the lesser mortals in society. I choose the words lesser mortals not because of lack of better words, but this being a matter where a young girl was murdered by officers that were indeed charged with protection of that very person, you did not shy away as a court to uphold the decision of the High Court and you consigned those officers to the fate that they chose. Having said that, allow me to end by saying the following, that notwithstanding the fact that the judiciary is independent. The three arms of government remain in the, uh, they remain um, interdependent and 
throughout your term as Chief Justice, we promise we shall be available to render support where necessary without compromising on your responsibility and the responsibility of the other two arms of government so that the best results that we can achieve as a system we are able to achieve them. and with those few remarks honorable chief justice and uh, uh, my lady deputy chief justice and your lordships uh, seated together we look forward to a very robust uh, supreme court that shall continue to provide guidance even as we proceed uh, to the next uh, dispensation which definitely of course everybody knows in the next one year we will be dealing with very germane issues related uh, to elections and justice will be one of the key things that everybody will be looking up to uh, thank you very much for the invitation i rest my submission thank you councillor alex moteti thank you for sharing your wisdom our chief justice thank you for promising that interagency cooperation is going to be enhanced by yourselves during and i suppose always but during the tenure of our current chief justice thank you for your promise that um you undertake to improve the justice chain system and guided by what uh, senior counsel fredo jambo said that um, we shall continue to remember that ours is to follow justice and justice alone thank you mr muteti it's now thank my pleasure to invite um our brother from the attorney general's office mr kennedy or to speak to the chief justice and to speak to us mr ogeto thank you very much honorable deputy chief justice and good morning good morning my lady the chief justice and president of the supreme court my lady the deputy chief justice my lords and my ladies judges of the supreme court the director of uh, public uh, prosecutions presented by mr Muteti. Ladies and gentlemen, well, let me also acknowledge Dr. Fred Ojembo, Chair of uh, the Senior Council Bar. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very grateful this morning for the honor and opportunity to make uh, these uh, brief remarks during this very auspicious occasion. I'm in attendance today on behalf of the Honorable the Attorney General. He would have wished to attend this event, save for other urgent official business that demanded his personal attention. He has requested that I convey his humble apologies. My lady, the Chief Justice, may I take this opportunity to once again congratulate you on your assumption of office. May I also take this opportunity to congratulate our brother, Justice William Oko, on his new role as a judge of the Supreme Court. Kenyans and the world look up to you and your colleagues in this court to answer to the call of justice. May expect that the Supreme Court and indeed all our courts shall remain true to the duty as the temples of justice. 
My lady, the Chief Justice, the commencement of your role as the Chief Justice and President of this court has come at a very critical time in the development of our justice system. During the last year, we have witnessed significant adoption of technology in our court system. We look at your leadership to harness the benefits that have come with this new approach and to ensure that no part of the country is left behind in this regard. Lady the Chief Justice, as we advance economically, socially and politically, we also continue to face unprecedented questions and challenges that require the guidance of our courts. This court, as the Apex Court, has the sacrosanct opportunity to shape and enrich our legal development, perhaps for generations to come. Such legal development is not just for the people of Kenya, it is also for the region, and in some instances, the world at large. This is, without a doubt, a heavy and monumental task. We remain confident, however, in this court's ability, under your able leadership, to guide the nation in the direction of law and justice. We must continue to strive to be a country of the rule of law and not of the rule by law. My lady, the Honorable the Chief Justice, may I, at this juncture, at this opportunity to wish you the very best. May God and the court, and may God bless Kenya. Thank you, my lords and my ladies. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Council Mr. Ogeto. Thank you for those words and we shall remember that our duty is to shape the legal direction of the dispensation of justice we shall remember to answer only to the call of justice and nothing else and we shall remember that in you we have a valued partner thank you very much at this juncture, it's my duty, honor and privilege to invite the Honorable the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya, who is the president of this court, to address not just the three speakers um, and not just to react to those, but to speak to the justice chain that waits for direction on matters justice from the Honorable the Chief Justice. Chief Justice Mother Kome. Uh, thank you very much, my lady, the Honorable Deputy Chief Justice, my colleagues, judges of the Supreme Court, all senior counsel present, led by the chair, Dr. Friend Ojiambo, the solicitor general, uh, Mr. Ken Ogeto, uh, Mr. Alex Moteti, representing the DPP, and all counsel present, guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is, it is the first time I and my brother, Mr. Justice William Oko, are wearing this prestigious robe of the Supreme Court. For me, I do so with grace and gratitude to God and to the people of Kenya who made it possible for me to ascend to this office 
of the Chief Justice and the President of the Supreme Court. In this capacity, I ex extend my appreciation and gratitude to everyone represented here today, the various actors in the administration of justice and state organs, learned council members of the public and the court staff who have joined us for this inaugural sitting of the Supreme Court following the court's recent constitution, the constitution when I and my brother, Mr. Justice William Ouko, joined the court. I would like to thank my brother and sister judges of the Supreme Court, and I also recognize the retired judges who worked tirelessly over the past decade to position the Supreme Court of Kenya as a respected and admired court in the group. It is worth mentioning that the court's indigenous jurisprudence in areas like the electoral law, human rights, especially where the court determined questions on the mandatory death penalty and the right to housing are profound pronouncements. The workings of the devolved system of government and the practice of bicameralism in our legislative system are decisions of this court that have been cited and talked about with admiration by scholars and other courts regionally and internationally. Our focus will be to build on this very strong foundation in the next decade. There is no doubt that the adoption of the current constitution is the most consequential event, as Senior Counsel and Dr. Friend Ojiambo has reminded us, and it is, provides a progressive pillar for Kenyan law it also has a comprehensive guiding compass for Kenya in the next decade. There is no doubt that the adoption of the current constitution is the most consequential event, as Senior Council and Dr. Fred Rodiago has reminded us, and it is, provides a progressive pillar for Kenya. My lady, uh, CJ, um, just a minute there. Esther, the technical team. Sorry about that. My lady, just wait, please. Esther. One more talk. We are there. Thank you. Are we looking into this? CJ, can you unmute? I can proceed. Now you can, my lady. Thank you, and sorry for that interruption. The Constitution stands as the most progressive pillar for Kenyan law and as a comprehensive guiding compass for Kenya's internal organization and global posturing. It must be appreciated that our constitution in its values, principles, and rules reflects the desire by Kenyans to break with our past authoritarian governance and unequal society and to strike in a radically different path of creating a democratic and egalitarian state and society. It is the foremost money on the creation and sustenance of a welfare state meeting the needs of the Kenyans wherever they are. Our constitution reflects the kind of society that Kenyans 
wish to build for themselves and for future generations. It reflects a desire by Kenyans to build a socially just society and a just state. This is a bold pronouncement of the aspirations and purposes that should animate all actions by state and non-state actors. Thus, for us in the Supreme Court and other courts, the development of a jurisprudence of social justice, or put differently, a social justice jurisprudence, will be our guiding North Star in the next decade. In essence, our role will be to guide other courts to broaden the administration of justice in a manner that is owned by Kenyans, socially transformative and empowering our communities. The pronouncement in the preambular provisions of the Constitution, Article 10, on the values and principles of national governance, Article 19.2, on the purpose of the Bill of Rights, leads to the inescapable conclusion that the Constitution is indeed a charter for social transformation. Given that the Supreme Court is the final custodian and guarantor of this Constitution, it is the Court that should always endeavor to provide jurisprudential leadership to the country in the quest for transformation of the society using the Constitution as the tool of social change. We will seek to put in practice the instruction, indeed the command in Article 23 and 259 of the Constitution, and also our Section 3 of the Supreme Court Act that requires that courts should develop the law to ensure that the vision of the Constitution is realized. This court in its operations and functioning will place a premium on cordiality and civility. By emphasizing on cordiality, I mean that as judges we are working on a joint project of deciding the matters before us impartially and independently to clarify the law. Thus the need for sharing of ideas and enriching our perspectives to resolve the disputes before us. This, of course, does not mean that difference of opinion is not encouraged. Rather, it means that judges have a duty to disagree in a principled manner. Recognizing that ours is an adversarial legal system that tends to pit parties against each other, it tends to encourage austerity and often leads to uncivil attacks directed to judges and to counsel on the opposite side. Such a situation, I dare say, weakens public confidence in the judicial process. My expectation is that the bar, while having the leeway and indeed encouraged to engage robustly and skillfully before us, we well appreciate the importance of severity from the bar. Thus, where one has a different opinion, it will be expressed in a manner that respects the advantage of, I put, disagreeing without being disagreeable, end of quote. We will call upon the public, the council, and everybody to allow judges to decide matters based on substantive issues before them, and not to divert the time and effort to some side shows uh, who are meant to cross the line and disrespect the court of the court. It will also be the court's duty to settle monumental and troubled questions of law affecting the society and to seek to intervene to ensure that justice system is operating effectively as intended by the Constitution and our laws. Towards this end, the court is sitting today 
to issue directions with respect to the implications of the landmark decision by the Supreme Court in the case of Francis Muruateto, popularly known as the Muruateto case, uh, which will be for the smooth and efficient operations of clarifying the sentencing in our criminal justice system. The Muruateto case is a landmark decision in our human rights jurisprudence. The Supreme Court held that sentencing is a judicial and not a legislative function under the principle of separation of powers that underpins our constitutional order. Since there may be varying degrees of criminal culpability, participation, heinousness, we all know that all mandas are the same and thus the need for mitigation in our murder trials and indeed in capital offenses where the accused person is facing a death sentence. Therefore, it is improper to impose one sentence by the registry applied by the courts. The mandatory death penalty is constitutional, but the mandatory is what was found to be unconstitutional. And then that case was referred for resentencing. The decision is undoubtedly a landmark for sentencing policy in Kenya and a good example of the impact of the Bill of Rights of Punishment in criminal it reiterates that constitutional values should be respected in the imposition of punishment for crimes. While Muruateto obviously was remitted to the death penalty in murder cases, the principles have been used and pronounced and have had far-reaching implications with ramifications for sentencing in other cases. Hence the need for this court to give further uh, directions. Indeed, the Court of Appeal and the High Court extended these principles to other cases, uh, i.e. robbery with violence and other criminal cases where registration prescribes minimum and mandatory sentences. And this is the situation that we intend to clarify today in the directions. While the principles of uh, Muruateto have been argued that are transferable, and this is a live debate, these cases have not yet been brought to this court to interrogate and to determine. This is a live controversy which will be resolved at an appropriate time when such cases reach the Supreme Court through the usual process. It is noteworthy that the Supreme Court uh, in the Muruateto case directed the Attorney General, the Director of Public Prosecution, and other relevant agencies to prepare a detailed professional review within the context of the judgment and set a framework to deal with the sentence, the hearing of cases of people who are sentenced to death. And the Attorney General was given 12 months to do that exercise. Unfortunately, it took long and it is pursuant to those orders after we received, the Supreme Court received the report by the task force that was put together by the AG that these directions were prepared. The aim of the directions and post-judgment hearing that we are doing today is to enable the court to get a report which we have received on the development of a framework for resentencing hearing and any difficulties that has been faced in the implementation of the judgment so that the Supreme Court can offer appropriate direction and orders that will ensure 
the criminal justice system works optimally. As a matter of priority, upon giving these directions, I intend to consult with the, of the Attorney General and other actors and stakeholders in the criminal justice system to put together a committee on revising the sentencing guidelines in line with these directions. Lastly, it would be remiss to conclude without mentioning and expressing my gratitude to the judges and staff of this court and indeed all judicial officers and staff of the judiciary for the hard work they have put to ensure that our courts are running since the pandemic struck this country this year. We were considering holding this inaugural sitting in an open court, but we did this uh, so as to encourage online proceedings and to recognize that the pandemic has changed the way the Supreme Court and other courts have been operating. We have now embraced technology and we are not letting it go because it eases the way we conduct our business. It has forced us to accelerate and embrace the information technology in our operations. The Supreme Court has embraced video and remote hearing to ensure that delivery of justice does not stop. I therefore thank the court staff, judges and the bar for enthusiastically supporting us and embracing the changes even as we work to resolve the teething problems of e-firing and other challenges that we experience in ensuring that we render justice during this difficult time. On that note, I wish to assure Kenyans that the Supreme Court and its judges do not live in ivory towers. We understand the problems that each one of us is encountering to access justice as we are part of the Kenyan society. And we will ensure that we give our best to nurture the social transformation that the Constitution has imposed on us. But as judges, we will remain independent and impartial as directed by the Constitution. And we urge Kenyans to allow us to speak through our judgments and not to respond to matters that are not before us. I thank you, my lords, my lady judges, all the colleagues and everybody for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chief Justice. Now guided that uh, this court shall heed the uh, exhortation in the Bible that says that we shall follow justice and justice alone. Listening to the promise that we shall get cooperation from the office of the uh, DPP and that thus shall be an endeavor to improve the justice system chain. Thank you, Solicitor General, for telling us to answer to the call of justice and to the call of justice alone. Ready as we have always been in this court to do the right thing, having had the Honorable the Chief Justice, we promise that we shall do what we know we came here to do, and which shall be to follow justice and justice alone. 
Thank you very much for coming and listening to the Honorable the Chief Justice. And it is now my pleasure to announce that Dr. Fred Ojiambo, Mr. Alex Moteti, and Solicitor General Kennedy Ogeto, you are free to log out. But you're also free to sit in and listen to the hearings that are proceeding immediately after this. And I now call upon the court administrator to call out for directions the first matter on the course list. Thank you very much.